Welcome to the Apple Insider Podcast. This is your host, Stephen Robles, and this episode is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. Download it for free at macpaw.app slash insider. And Remote HQ. Go to remotehq.co slash Apple Insider for a free trial and use the promo code Apple Insider for three months for free. And SanDisk. Go to sandisk.com slash Apple Insider to get 15% off your first order. Welcome to the Apple Insider Podcast. This is your host, Stephen Robles, and joining me this week with a fresh new pair of AirPods Max, like myself, Wes Hilliard. What's going on, Wes? Uh, excuse me, I'm a little out of breath. I just got done working out. <laughs> oh, 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 excuse me. A little humble brag there. Okay, yes, we have uh, both also tried Fitness Plus, and so we will cover that in a moment. But first, I mean... It's the big news this week. The AirPods Max, they shipped. Wes and I both have a pair. Android Apple Insider also has a pair. Where to begin? There's so many videos out there about the AirPods Max. I feel like every review starts out with the same line. I don't even know if I want to say it personally, but it's like, I'm not an audiophile. You know, that's like every review starts out like that. And I feel like when we talk about these headphones, not that it doesn't matter, but I think it's clear that these headphones are kind of a different product than what someone like an audiophile who's going to buy a headphone amp and an open back pair of headphones and listen to flax on their computer. Like this product is different and I don't think it's for them. Yeah, I don't believe we're going to see too much of, you know, Taylor Swift mixing her next album on the AirPods Max. I mean, Apple might try to promote them that way, but I don't see it happening. These aren't studio headphones. They're pretty targeted entertainment devices all the way around. And I mean, they're expensive for those reasons. I mean, you can buy expensive expensive entertainment devices just because the high price tag is there doesn't mean it has to be directly built for professionals uh, who's going to go in here and make million dollar records with these things. All right. So let's talk about kind of first impressions. I got them Tuesday of this week. Pulled them out. What color did you get, Wes? I got space gray. Space gray. So did I. Uh, you know, William was trying to make me feel bad last week. He, he thought I should go with some colorful thing. But after seeing the different pictures of them and Andrew's got a couple videos, I, I feel like I went with the right choice. I, I like the space gray. I don't have to worry about them getting as dirty as maybe the white, which would be, you know, hard to care for. And the blue, while it matches the iPad Air and some of the new iPhone 11 colors, I don't know. I wasn't crazy about that blue either. So I, I'm kind of glad I went with black do you have any color remorse it's it's really strange because like I, I the first time andrew posted a picture of his airpods uh, max i was confused because the headband was blue and the ear cups looked silver again it's just that it's the ipad air color scheme where right. it's so muted it's almost still silver or space gray depending on the light and i didn't really like that the first time. So I definitely didn't want that as a fashion statement on my head. So I'm glad I went with space gray. I will say just taking them out of the box and holding them, it is abundantly clear that they are a super high quality piece of hardware. You know, the, the ear cups, the aluminum, they feel solid. The cushions are very comfortable. I'm wearing them right now. I listened as much as I could the last couple of days. And so they are, they're very comfortable. It doesn't feel super heavy on your head. If you're moving your head a lot, you know, obviously you will feel it, but it's comfortable to wear for a long time. I have to say one of the most satisfying things to do with them is pulling out the stainless steel bar that, you know, the extension bar to adjust the length of the ear cups with the headband. It is so tight. And like, not in a bad way. Like it feels like this is going to last. I don't have to worry about this thing getting loose over time. It just really feels like a great hardware design. And you could tell, I mean, I Apple put premium materials in these headphones. Yeah, it definitely fights against you. And um, I don't see these things ever wearing loose. Like right. eventually a lot of these um, headphone headbands wear down to the point where it you get the three clicks on whichever size you get. And eventually you just wear that away and the whole thing just falls to the floor or just completely removes itself from the headset. <laughs> right. I don't see that happening with these headphones. Now, before we get to the sound quality and spatial audio experience, which I, I definitely want to talk about at length, in addition to the hardware, I mean, so much has been said about the case, which I feel like is even a bad word to describe this thing. It's it's almost like a sleeve for the AirPods Max. I don't hate it. It's fine. You know, it puts them into that ultra low power mode, but seeing a lot of the other reviews on YouTube, it almost seems like they would be fine if you didn't keep them in the case overnight. You know, there's barely much battery lost if you, if you leave them out of the case by accident. So 
Well, of course, I'm using them and putting them back in there. I don't think you have to worry about them dying overnight. If they're at 90%, you forget to put them in the case and, and just leave them on. But for me, and, and I've seen different things on Twitter, people have been tweeting back at me, the cutout for the lightning port that goes to the AirPods Max, for some reason, mine does not line up properly, or I don't know if I need to do something different with this case, but I was curious, does your cutout for the lightning port actually match up with the AirPods Max? I think I figured this out. I believe if you change the headband length, okay. you're changing the position of the headphones in the case. So if you completely pack them up and push them back into the headband, it should align. I could get mine to align, but yes, it's kind of weird that if it's one person using these things and you set it up to your size and put them back in the case, it's going to look a little uh, sideways. Right. Well, I'll try that afterwards and maybe post a picture. But, you know, the sleeve itself, I was trying to think about, you know, what would it have looked like if Apple included a hard case or even a soft case, but something that actually held the entire pair of AirPods Max. And as I was thinking about it, you know, because Apple didn't go with that folding design where the ear cups kind of fold into the area underneath the headband to make it more compact, this would have been like a huge case. Yes. If you had to put the entire AirPods Max into a large case, it would have been very large. And for me, I have a Peak Design backpack. I actually got it recently because I was, you know, all the hype around Peak Design for a long time. It's everyone's favorite backpack. I finally got one and I do really enjoy it. The backpack is amazing. But trying to fit the AirPods Max in a way that doesn't just leave a whole bunch of open, unusable space in a bag, it is rather difficult. And if it was actually a case that held the entire AirPods Max, I mean, it would just be huge. And so while I'm still wishing that there was an option to have a full case, I mean, I'm sure Apple will probably pretty soon sell you a full case for the AirPods Max with the magnetic thing that puts them in the ultra sleep mode. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm actually struggling to have these be in my bag. You know, maybe they're just really meant to be at your computer or at your home setup or office or whatever. But I do want to take them with me where I go. And I, I travel to a coffee shop sometimes and, and other places. Yeah, putting them in the bag, it is a little awkward. How have you found that? First of all, the case, it's 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 weird and that material, I, I'm not a big fan. It feels kind of cheap, but yeah. it serves its purpose. I mean, it covers up the majority of the uh, aluminum pieces, which is what's going to get scuffed and scratched in a bag. Um, I'm not really worried about the canopy or the silicon covering on the uh, stainless steel headband getting damaged too much. I mean, if, if you're carrying knives in your bag loose, with your uh, AirPods Max, you might have something to worry about. But if you're a Cutco sales rep, you maybe not put them in the same bag. Right. So overall, I'm not complaining. I, I think at other headphone cases like the uh, Beat Studios always came with a hard shell, uh, like egg shaped case. And this thing turned the headphones, even when folded up small, put into this case, it doubled their size and it, it protected them and they needed it because they were plastic. But I didn't really like that case. So most of the time I would travel with this case on the outside of a bag, maybe connected to a keychain rather than uh, taking up, you know, premium luggage space. Apple, I think, is making very conscious decisions here with the way that it's um, selling this to us. It doesn't fold up. It doesn't um, have like articulating hinges or anything like that. It's just these premium headphones that you can put on and take off quickly, <laughs> right? you know, kind of like the AirPods at your leisure, but storage and travel, I don't think Apple expects this to be your replacement airplane headphone. Now that isn't to say don't use these on airplanes. It's just, you might need to rethink a little bit on how you're carrying your things. I'm not going to, I don't expect people to carry these things around like a purse and hold it by its handle, but you just might <laughs> need to rethink how you're packing your luggage or your bag. For me, I recently received um, from Nomadic their Navigator Series 6 liter bag. And I've been playing with this thing. I'm probably I'm going to be reviewing it on Apple Insider in the next few weeks. And it is the perfect companion to these headphones. So I haven't had as many complaints because hmm. I'll have to post you a picture or something. But I put an iPad in one pocket, a PlayStation 4 controller, and these headphones in another pocket. And that's pretty much everything I'm carrying, plus some cables and uh, chargers. And it is the perfect little, basically large fanny pack style <laughs> sling bag. I, it, if there was a case for these... I'm, you might as well say it's this. Okay. I, I've, I've known people to uh, carry like 
boom boxes, radios, and stereos in a, as a separate object. So <laughs> maybe having a bag just for your AirPods Max isn't the worst idea. Sure. While durability uh, seems good, that the mesh in that top headband, that, that's the one thing that I would you know be worried about tearing or whatever. But as far as scratches, there was actually an anecdote from uh, one of our friends on Twitter. I won't say his name, basic Apple guy, but he actually dropped his AirPods Max from a couple feet onto a table. Hmm. And surprisingly, no nicks or cuffs or anything. So even though the aluminum you know, it's aluminum and not steel for the big ear cups. And those are kind of large area things that could be damaged. It seems like those are pretty durable. And so could withstand some, some knocking around. It definitely causes me some bit of OCD when the, uh, you, you fold the ear cups to put in the case and the aluminum sides touch and rub against each other. And I'm just wondering how long until we start seeing scrape lines from those ear cups touching each other, but who knows? All right. So the big thing about these is sound quality. Now I don't have all the different over the ear headphones that some of the other reviewers are doing. You know, if you want to see the comparison to the Sony's XM4s or the Bose Quiet Comforts and the the Sennheiser Momentums, you know, the Verge has great reviews on that. MKBHD did a review. I think Marco Armand is going to be talking about it on the ATP podcast. So I don't have those exact comparisons. I'll point you there for that. But when it comes to general sound quality, I don't want to like list a resume of what, you know, I can speak from for music, but I've had several headphones in the past, probably the best quality headphones I, I've used and have owned are some of the Shure 535s. They're actually in-ear like monitor headphones. They're for live production. You know, if you're monitoring yourself, I, I play bass at times and they're for monitoring that kind of stuff. But listening to music in those kinds of headphones is actually a great experience. It sounds really nice. And I've also had experience with some of the Bose Quiet Comforts and all that. But when it comes to sound quality, honestly, recently, I'll either listen to something in my regular AirPods, my AirPods Pro, or my HomePod. That's a majority of my listening. And that's where I just kind of listen to everything. And so comparing it into those like general listening devices that I've been using recently and not an audiophile, I'm not one to care about making sure I can hear every single shaker in every song or anything like that. I do find that these AirPods Max are really pleasurable to listen to. I sat down and I tried to go through several samples of different kinds of music. One of the ones, I actually tweeted about this. Uh, I enjoy listening to jazz type music and some fusion. And so there's an artist called Snarky Puppy. It's a funny name, but if you've never heard of it, you can check them out on YouTube and they're on Apple Music. I'll put a link to them in show notes. But they have one of their most popular songs is called Lingus. And this group, you know, they have horns, they have, you know, bass, drums, guitar, synths, keyboards, all that very like fast fusion jazz kind of style funk, you know, all that kind of feeling and listening to that track in the AirPods Max, like I said on Twitter, like it was really an experience. Like as I was listening, I was like, whoa, as they built and really got big towards the end of the song, I was really just like taking it all in. I was like, this is intense. This is amazing. And so I, I enjoyed listening to that. I listened to some pop music on it and that sounded really good. And the one area that I really wanted to test, I actually, my background is music. I'm a trumpet player, uh, classically, you know, all the Haydn symphonies and all that kind of stuff, took music history in college. So I actually really enjoy classical music. And so I was looking forward to trying some works of classical music on these headphones. And so Mikey actually on Apple Insider also listened to something. He uh, was saying that he was actually a little disappointed at the classical reproduction in the AirPods Max. Now I will say that I've listened to a few things. For William, I listened to Mahler Symphony 5. That was a nice experience. Also, John Walker on Twitter recommended I listen to Shostakovich Symphony Number no. 5, which is actually what Mikey listened to. The one that I had the best sample from and one of my favorite pieces This is super music nerd, so excuse me just for a moment. But Mozart's Requiem, that's an entire work, and the movement Lacrimosa. I actually sung it in high school and college, and it's just one of my favorite pieces of music ever. And listening to that, it was one of my best experiences listening to that piece of work. If you could believe it, I've listened to that piece of work for years, 
And for some reason, I had never heard the opening chord that is extremely soft at the beginning of that piece of work. I'll put the Apple Music link in show notes, but there is a chord at the very beginning. You really have to crank it up uh, to hear it on most other things, but wearing it with the AirPods Max, starting that track, I actually heard that chord and it surprised me and I was like, I didn't even know that that was there. And so for me, a lot of the music experiences on these headphones has just been really pleasurable. It's fun to listen to. And like MKBHD said in his review, it's almost like luxury listening. For me, I really enjoy how they sound and the kinds of music I listen to. It really plays them well. This episode is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one cleaning and optimizing software for your Mac. For flawless performance, Macs need maintenance. Clean My Mac X is an amazing utility that helps you clean all that up, even free up some disk space, and helps your Mac run faster. Especially if you have an older Mac, you definitely want to consider Clean My Mac X because it will get it running much faster than it is now. It's got powerful functionality and lots of useful features. One of my favorite features is when you want to uninstall an app, Clean My Mac X will make sure that all those files in the library and application support, that all those are deleted in addition to the app itself. The app's most popular feature is the Smart Scan. It examines your system for log files and user cache that is no longer needed, and then it does a quick malware check and runs optimization tasks to speed up your Mac. And it all just takes a couple seconds. And I love that Clean My Mac X really feels like an application for your Mac. It's beautifully designed, it's easy to install, and it's just fun to use. Clean My Mac X gives you more control over apps and their files, and you can find out what apps and programs you have on your Mac and then uninstall the ones you don't need. So you definitely want to check out Clean My Mac X. You can download it for free. Try it totally for free at macpaw.app slash insider. That's our special link. Go to M-A-C p-a-w dot app slash insider and download clean my mac x for free right now our thanks to clean my mac x for sponsoring this episode well just a preamble my understanding is is that noise canceling headphones and the 300 to 350 dollar range that we're talking about with sony and bose typically have great noise canceling and middling slightly terrible audio depending on who you ask right they're fine right. as far as music goes but that's usually what you hear from people who know what they're talking about don't take my word for it go go listen to the people who know but my experience with these headphones so far and from what i've read they sound pretty amazing and apple's constant adjustments to everything you're listening to is obviously at work here i mean listening to something on apple music and then going to somewhere else you can tell that there's a little bit of difference because just like with the home pods apple music's getting a little bit of extra special treatment in the background and getting some uh, extra code thrown in to help uh, these automatic adjusting speakers recreate the audio in a different way from what a standard speaker would get because of all those extra smarts in the H1 chip. I've definitely noticed in some of the things I've listened to, instruments and harmonies that just didn't stand out before. I listened to wide variety of different music. Uh, I think the first thing I put on just because it was in clicking distance was a jazz recreation of Pokemon music, which of course, <laughs> very, love very it. fitting for me. I, I, I love it. Look it up. Insane in the rain music. Those guys are great. You stayed on brand. Yeah. That's good. Going from there, went to classic rock and different kinds of pop music and everything just sounded phenomenal. You, you can't fail listening to Wish You Were Here or something like I, I went and listened to, once I saw you mention it, Snarky Puppy, because I've listened to them before. And uh, like you said, this track, Lingus, was amazing on the AirPods Max. But yeah. overall, musically, you'll just have to try them. It's, it's different from other headphones you're going to hear. I don't really think you're going to find headphones that sound like this because of the computational portion of this. There are better sounding headphones. There are also more expensive headphones. I think these fit uh, pretty well in their price range, personally. But as I've mentioned on Twitter, this isn't just about the audio experience. It's the entertainment whole. And Apple expects you to be using these with Apple TV+, Plus, Dolby Vision content, stuff like that. And I found that its recreation of like surround sound is perfect. I went and listened to scenes in Greyhound where the battle action is going crazy and you can just hear the cannons just popping off and it's just vibrating your head with that heavy bass. <laughs> it ju it's just very well done. Also worth mentioning, these are still technically Bluetooth headphones. 
zero lag with content because of some Apple magic they're doing. So you're not going to see any lag, including in games. So I play um, a lot of music rhythm style games. I went and tried out Sidus 2, which is a fun rhythm game on iPad using these headphones. And while the audio was noticeably different, because again, it's not getting that Apple music magic thrown in, it was still good quality. And I didn't have to change the syncing engine in the game whatsoever. And I actually got a couple of high scores listening with these headphones. They're just, they're really quite good for all the things you're going to do on an iPad or iPhone. Yeah, and, and one of the things, like you mentioned, the computational audio, the adaptive EQ, you know, these have microphones inside the cups because it is basically listening to what you're listening to and adjusting the EQ, you know, even if you have glasses and there's like a slight break in the ear cup because of that, it will adjust the EQ to compensate for that. And this is, again, I think one of these separations between someone like an audiophile who wants control over what the EQ is doing in their headphones. A lot of other over-ear headphones, noise canceling as well, will have an app where you would like manage the sound settings of the headphones in an app. When it comes to Apple's AirPods, you're not going to be able to fiddle with stuff like that. And again, so if you want to fiddle with those kinds of settings, these are probably not for you. And again, I think the audiophile world is probably in that same realm. They want to control the EQ and know that it's going to stay how you have set them. For someone like me, I just want to put them on and listen to music or listen to a podcast. And these, I don't even have to think about. I just put it on my head, play it, and it sounds great. And I'm not going to worry about any kind of EQ or adjusting setting. I think that is a value to these as opposed to maybe other over-the-ear headphones. Uh, this has a great tangential relationship to Apple's other computational fields, like their computational photography. We'll, we'll get into it later, but they recently released uh, Pro Raw to everyone to give iPhone photographers full control of every photo that they take top to bottom versus Apple's computational photography happening when you just take a Heek photo um, instead. And that translates well here because if you want more control, Apple just doesn't have that. Maybe in the future, they'll come out with a Pro Audio or something, but your AirPods Max are Apple's Heek photos. They are Everything computational happening in the background, you just put them on, you press a, you press play, and you get the best possible experience created by Apple without you having to input versus professionals wanting maybe every single dial available at their fingertips. Yeah. Now, as you alluded to a moment ago, using these for movie and TV viewing, the spatial audio on these, if you use them on an AirPods Pro pair of headphones, I would say this is a different experience. And what I did, uh, I actually took what Gruber suggested on one of his recent talk shows. He said, go to this scene in Ford versus Ferrari with, uh, you know, Matt Damon and Christian Bale. And there's a scene when Shelby, Matt Damon's character, takes Ford, the owner, in the car and drives him around this like airport track. And watching this scene with spatial audio turned on on the AirPods Max, I have a home theater setup at home. It's not 7.1, it's not Dolby Atmos, but I have a 5.1 Denon receiver. And, you know, I, I try to set up the speakers as best I can. They're mounted on my wall. I have a spot I sit in on the couch for the best experience surround sound. Even that, I would say that the intensity of the experience even virtually in spatial audio in a scene like that versus Ford versus Ferrari, I think I almost prefer playing it in the AirPods Max for a couple of reasons. When you have a home theater setup, even if you have a room dedicated to it, by the nature of surround sound, there's going to be parts in that room where it sounds better than others, where there's an actual like, even if you have that microphone that you set up to calibrate the sound surround sound system, even at 7.1, that one spot is going to be calibrated. But if you have multiple people sitting around, or even if you want to sit somewhere different, it's not going to be the same accuracy for the surround sound. With these AirPods Max, again, it's that luxury of not having to even think about where am I sitting? Where are the speakers? How Do I have to set my rear speakers a little louder than the front ones because of their distance from the couch or whatever? Like you just put these on, you watch a movie, and it just sounds great. You know, whether or not it sounds like sounds are coming from behind you or whatever, I actually found watching this scene in Ford vs. Ferrari, whenever the car would go from left to right on screen, like it is very clear in the audio 
that it's doing that. You know, and I, you could do that in stereo, but in spatial audio, it feels more immersive when you're watching it. And I even had my wife try it, and she was like, "Wow, that sounds." really good. Like, and she watched the movies in our home in the living room as well with the surround sound and all that. So again, a differentiator between these AirPods Max and other headphones like the Bose or the Sony's is this spatial audio. And if you watch stuff on your iPad, again, it doesn't work with Apple TV yet, which is unfortunate. But if you watch stuff on your iPad or just want to consume stuff with great sound and you don't want to buy a home theater system or you don't have the space for it, I mean, these sound great when you're watching movies and TV. So if you want to try something familiar that you've heard your entire life, this isn't Dolby Atmos or anything fancy, but go put on Charlie Brown's Christmas. We've all heard it a million times. You know what to listen for, but something about these headphones and the way that it's tuning the audio makes it sound just phenomenal. The voices come at you right in the center channel. When Linus throws a snowball at a can, you can hear it whizzing across your head in in that in that perfect stereo. So just <laughs> just a good a good example of something that maybe everyone's heard before that you can relate to past experiences with. It's just it's kind of crazy how even older audio stuff like that can sound really good. I watch mash uh this old show every day during lunch <laughs> yeah because it's perfect it's 22 minutes long and i usually put it on uh in the kitchen while i'm making a, <laughs> my sandwich and i listened the other day with the airpods max on just the audio coming through is crystal clear the it's it's set in this like war environment and just hearing shells in the background it's just whatever computations they're doing in addition to even just stereo audio, it's able to like simulate some things that really shouldn't be there, especially in content uh, that old. So it's it's kind of wild. Right. So two last things I want to touch on, which is wired use and noise canceling. So I'm using these wired right now as the monitor for our podcasts. I typically use wired headphones that are not running in Bluetooth or whatever. So you have to buy this $35 cable to use it wired, which is unfortunate. I do wish Apple would have included it with these $550 headphones. But you have this cable, you get it, you plug it into a headphone jack, and they work, and it's fine. I saw someone say that there's a tiny bit of latency uh, even listening to it plugged in like this. So I have it plugged into my Mix Pre 3. Microphone is in there too, monitoring myself. There might be a very, very almost imperceptible amount of latency, but for someone like me doing a podcast, it's not really perceptible. If you're trying to do music production with it, maybe it won't work. But one oddity I will say is I plugged it in and I could barely hear anything at first myself or the person I was recording with. And so I cranked the headphone volume on the Mix Pre 3 and it still didn't turn the volume up high enough in the AirPods Max. And then I realized the digital crown on the AirPods Max, you actually have to turn that up as well. And so even though they're technically not connected to one of my Apple devices, they're not connected to my iPhone, my iPad, or my Mac wirelessly at the moment, they're hardwired, that digital crown still adjusts the volume of these headphones even when they're plugged in directly to a device. Now, I've seen mixed reports also of being able to use these as passive headphones. MKBHD said, yes, you can. The Verge said, no, you can't. But the thing about these, even if you could, apparently that digital crown adjusts the volume. And so if they are completely dead, batteries at 0%, and I were to try to plug these into my Mix Pre 3, even with my volume cranked, it would not be giving enough volume inside the can. And so I almost feel like the answer is probably yes and no. You know, if these were completely dead and you plug them into a device, maybe even a headphone amp, you might be able to hear something, but it'd be probably very, very quiet. And that you actually need to have some battery power in the AirPods Max in order to be able to uh, have the volume because the battery is basically like acting as the preamp in the AirPods Max. So a little quirky trying to use it wired to a device, but it works. You can do it. I'm going to use them as my podcasting, you know, headphones just because I'm probably just going to use these all the time. I'm going to edit a podcast on it and let me record it on it as well. But a little awkward. Did you get one of these cables to try it out? Yes, I, I'm, I'm using it right now in our podcast. Of course, I'm still in the weird two headphone setup because I'm recording from an iPad. So AirPods Pro, left ear, AirPods Max, right ear, but it works. And 
I had a I had a problem with volume when I first plugged it in. I had I couldn't hear myself at all. I didn't really tinker with anything on the headphone. I just uh, blasted the volume all the way up on the iPad. And I can hear myself fine. But yeah, I'll have to I'll have to try that hardware trick. But it is a noticeable like strangeness that it came in so low right away. This episode is brought to you by Remote HQ. Especially during this time, we have all tried many different collaboration tools, video conferencing and screen sharing. But let me tell you, out of all those tools that you may have already used, you have got to check out Remote HQ. If you want a way to make it feel like you are in the same room with your coworkers and people that are calling in, maybe clients, Remote HQ is an amazing tool for collaboration in real time. If you'd like to actually see a video demo of Remote HQ in action, check out that link in show notes and you can see what it's really capable of. Some of its amazing features is website, co-branding, and co-control. That means that all of the members in a meeting can actually interact and make changes on the website you're looking at. Different users can seamlessly take control when they need to or sit back when someone else is contributing. And you can turn any website instantly into a collaborative experience so multiple people can click, scroll, and type away. This is incredibly useful, especially if you're on a creative team or you're trying to project manage something with multiple people. This is an amazing tool for that. You can also customize the workspace that you're in online. And this is not something you even have to download. Remote HQ is completely in the web browser, so no downloading any app to your computer, which is great and it makes it easy for other people to join. And when you customize the workspace, you can mix and match apps on your screen for any use case. You can simultaneously browse online and take notes in a Google Doc, all while still being able to see your teammates. I also love their feature called the Searchable Digital Trail. As you take notes during a meeting and people collaborate, all those notes are actually saved in Remote HQ, and you can search through those notes later if you can't remember what was said in a meeting or what was decided. That digital trail is there for you to search. And then once you get your workspace just like you like it, you can save that page layout and use it for recurring meetings. You have got to check out Remote HQ. Again, you can see it in action, that video in show notes, but go to remotehq.co slash Apple Insider for a free trial. That's remote, R-E-M-O-T-E, H-Q, the letters, dot co, slash Apple Insider for a free trial. And when you're ready to sign up, use the promo code Apple Insider, all one word, for three months free. I think you're going to love Remote HQ, and our thanks to them for sponsoring this episode. So the last thing I just wanted to touch on about these... Well, last two things. So the hardware buttons, you know, there were rumors before these came out that there would be like touch controls on the ear cups and and stuff like that. I'm actually glad they went with hardware buttons. I really like the digital crown as a button and volume control. And I think the other button for changing the noise canceling effect is really nice. Because like with the AirPods Pro, you know, you hold it to change what mode they're in. And it's fine, but I actually just like the one button push to change the mode. So glad they did the hardware buttons. Yeah, I, I like them. I was hoping that maybe if you press and hold on the button, it might turn them off. That would make the most sense, but it puts them into pairing mode. So other than that, it's pretty nice. The digital crown feels good. It is much larger than the Apple Watch uh, digital crown. Oh, yeah. But it it feels good. Uh, it does its own fake clicking noise in your ears when you're changing the volume. Yeah, that's nice. I, I wanted to note, though, that the transparency versus ANC modes, if you're in a completely quiet room and have nothing to actively cancel it's actually kind of funny if you put it in active noise canceling i can't i can't tell the difference between the two so i have to snap my fingers to see which one i'm in because i haven't learned which (laughs) uh tone is the tone for anc versus transparency i just wanted to say though that when i first got these headphones and put them on sound the quote-unquote negative noise that it puts into your ears was noticeable at first because i guess it was so intense i wasn't used to it and i could almost hear the pressure on my ears but that went away after maybe 30 minutes of use. But uh, whatever Apple's doing here with ANC, is, is, it's kind of nuts. Yeah, and that was the last thing I wanted to comment on. So I have three kids at home, and the first few minutes as I was trying to test these was at home, and they were all being kids. And the noise-canceling to transparency mode was such a big difference. And, like, transparency mode on the AirPods Pro is interesting, and is it's a little wild transparency mode on the AirPods Max is just a bizarre experience. Like it it almost increases the noise around you into your ears. I mean, obviously that's what it's doing. It has microphones picking up what's outside the room and putting it in, but it is 
so clear on the AirPods Max. You know, it is it is a I don't know, it's a wild experience. And then the noise canceling, it works great. You know, you can hear someone if they are talking to you and you don't have the music very loud. You know, it's not going to cut them out entirely. But I will say I went to a small coffee shop. There was not really anybody else around. Uh, but I sat close to where the music was playing in the coffee shop and it was a little loud. And so I was like, all right, well, let me see how these do. And so I turned on noise canceling mode and it definitely cut down the music some, but I could still hear it. But the nice thing about the AirPods Max is I can turn the volume up pretty high. It is still comfortable to listen to. It's not distorting. And I was able to put it loud enough to drown out the other music that was going on inside the little cafe. So noise canceling is great, but the ability to really crank the volume, still be comfortable, not harsh, and it's still an enjoyable experience. And I was listening to kind of just some atmospheric background music, so it wasn't particularly loud or boisterous music as it is. It was uh, good to listen to, and it really helped that experience. Looking at my headphone health in the app, in the health app, because I was kind of curious about <laughs> how loud these things get. And in the last couple of days, I've wore these for maybe six, seven hours since I've got them. And according to headphone health, my audio levels haven't exceeded the limit um, of 100 decibels. So despite turning these things up really loud to the point where I can't even hear myself talk, they're apparently not um, damaging my ears. I don't know how um, accurate this is or if this is even pulling data from the AirPods Max. I'll have to do a bit of testing, but that's something to uh, look at if anyone forgot that uh, hearing health was something that Apple tracked as you listen to music. Uh, it's it's certainly concerning if you if you do wear these headphones and turn the volume all the way up it's to the point of being deafened but in a in a good way like everything just sounds perfectly clear as if you're in a concert in front of the band but your ears are also not in pain so 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 the final question i mean should you get these who should get them this is a very tough question you know like i said earlier if you are an audiophile you want to eq your headphones you have a headphone amp and you have open back headphones and you're going to compare these to six seven hundred dollar or more expensive headphones honestly probably not for you you know you're really trying to get in there you're a professional you really want you know reference headphones or just being able to control exactly how it sounds like these are not for you and if you are you know, perfectly happy, or maybe you don't listen to a lot of music. And so regular AirPods or even AirPods Pro are great. You know, you want to watch stuff on your TV and you don't want to have headphones on. You don't watch stuff on your iPad. Maybe it's not for you either. But if you enjoy listening to music or want to enjoy again, listening to music with no fuss, not caring about EQ, adjusting anything, and you want noise canceling and the ease of AirPods, and you can afford it. I mean, these are not cheap. Again, these are $550. You know, I do think it is a nice experience. It's a great sound. I really enjoy it. It's I'm going to enjoy actually editing podcasts on these because I edit on an iPad and I don't hardwire my headphones to my iPad. I know a lot of podcasters and other people complain about the latency and how it's just impossible to edit a podcast using wireless headphones. I do it every week for three to four shows and it doesn't bother me in ferrite. I know what I'm listening to. I can see the sound waves. I know what I want to edit. It doesn't hinder me. And so for my editing on the iPad, for general listening, you know, to what the kind of music I want to listen to, I really enjoy these. I'm glad I got them. If you get a chance one day to go back to an Apple store and hear what they sound like in person, obviously that's the ideal scenario. So this way, you know what you're buying, but Overall, I, I really enjoy them. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the more controversial approach. If you heard someone who says that they can hear the mercury heating up in a thermometer, you're not going to want these headphones. <laughs> I've never understood some of these audiophile things that I think half of it's made up. But yes, these these are not for people who hold sound above everything else. They are computational audio headphones. They're computers you wear on your head. It is not going to be perfect mix audio from whatever source that you have. No matter what you pump in, it's not going to be the same as listening to it on a record in a clean room. But overall, I agree though. These these are the ultimate like entertainment headphones from music to media. If you think, if you trust Apple's algorithms to give you a good media experience, and I think so far they've proven to be pretty good, uh, these are definitely for you, especially if you're using an iPad. I look forward to seeing where these things go. Hopefully, Apple opens up some APIs. I think games can take advantage of spatial audio now, just none have. But I look forward to video games and AR-related games uh, taking advantage of spatial audio in the future. And even though these are expensive, they're worth every dollar, if, especially if you use them as much as I do on movies, TV shows, and 
even podcasts sound great in these. So Absolutely. All right. Well, that was a long time on AirPods Max, but we still have more to touch on. Fitness Plus launched earlier this week. It launched on Monday, December 14th, and it is available. You can do it on your Apple TV, your iPad, and even your iPhone. A little weird on the iPad, you actually have to download the fitness app separately. It doesn't just appear. So if you're looking for it on iPad, go to the App Store, search for fitness, and you'll see that app. You need iOS 14.3 and Watch OS 7.2 if you want those watch features on screen. So I downloaded all it on day one and I did a workout. Um, I'll be honest, I don't work out very often. I usually prefer going to, I have a certain gym I haven't been to in a long time since pandemic and all, but they actually have a cardio cinema where you can like go in and do an elliptical while a big movie plays like in this room and it's a dark room. It's actually my preferred way of exercising. It's great. But for this, I wanted to try it out. And so it's an interesting experience. You open the fitness app on Apple TV. You also have to Apple update your Apple TV and the fitness app appears. You open the fitness app and it asks you to confirm on your watch who is about to work out, which is interesting. Notably, it's for one person. You know, you can't at this moment do a workout with two separate people and have both of their, you know, watch stuff on the TV. Uh, it's nice because once the workout starts in Fitness Plus, the service, you know, the workout automatically starts on the Apple Watch. It ends when the video ends. So you actually don't have to do anything on your Apple Watch except confirm at the beginning of the workout that it's you doing it, it's your Apple Watch, and then you're off. Then you pick a workout. Now, this is interesting because you know, they have the high intensity, the rowing, cardio, yoga, they have all those different things. I did a strength training one and a core one. And once you go into the kind of workout you want to do, you can choose the duration. They have 10, 20, 30 minute exercises. I think it even goes up to 50 minute. But what's interesting too, is you can also choose the music style, but you can't mix and match all the different workouts with the music styles and the durations. So for instance, there was this, uh, one of the trainers' names is Amir, and that's who I did the first workout with, the strength training. And when you pick the music style or the duration, it kind of filters down which workouts are available. And if you do the 10-minute strength training workout with Amir, it's going to be the singular music style that's attached to that workout, and you can't switch it out. Like, you can't say, I want to do the 10-minute strength training with Amir, but country music, or but hip-hop music. Like, it is the music that is attached to the workout. And I understand why, because actually when you do the workout, the trainers comment on the music and actually call out the artists, which is a little cool, but I almost prefer they would have kept it separate so you could have this 10-minute workout with Amir and strength training and then choose the style of music you wanted independent of it. Obviously, the time workout, like the 10, 20, 30 minutes, are going to have a set number of songs because of that. But I find it interesting that they kept it tied together like that for really just the couple moments in the workout where the trainer calls out the kind of music that's playing. So I thought that was interesting. Or And one other point before I actually talk about the workout, you know, my wife has done the Beachbody video series workouts. And the thing that she likes about those is they kind of have a 100-day progression workout, or, you know, you could do a 30-day deal. And Fitness Plus does not have that kind of progressive workout programs at the moment. So it's not like you could say, I want to start a 30-day you know, training deal that's going to take me over a progression over 30 days where I reach a goal. It, it doesn't have those kinds of workout plans just yet. I imagine those might come one day, but for now, it's really just picking one or two individual workouts a day. You know, you want to do core today, you pick that one workout. You want to do cardio the next day, you pick that workout. There's not one that you can just say, I want to do this workout for the next 30 days, do day two tomorrow, do day three the next day after that. When I open it, just do it. There's not that kind of option. This episode is brought to you by SanDisk. If you have a modern iPhone, you know it takes amazing 4K videos and high-res photos, but they can take up a lot of storage space. Especially if you're on the go and your phone fills up, you might not be able to empty them out or maybe you don't want to delete them. Well, that's why I have to highly recommend, especially during this holiday season, SanDisk's iExpand Flash Drive Go. It's a great way to back up the important files on your iPhone and copy photos and videos directly on the iExpand drive. The iExpand Flash Drive Go is really just like a thumb drive for your phone. It's so cool. It actually has a lightning port on one side so you can plug it directly into your iPhone and it has a USB on the other end so you can plug it directly into your computer. This is really useful. I take a lot of photos and videos on my phone. Sometimes I want to edit it quickly and get it on my computer. I can just use the iExpand Flash Drive, connect it to my iPhone, copy the video or photo files over and then right onto my Mac. 
I also do a lot with audio, obviously, because I do podcasts. And so if I record something on my iPhone, I can just move the audio file onto the iExpand drive and then right to my computer. It's way faster, especially when you're dealing with large files rather than using something like AirDrop. And I also love that the iExpand flash drive integrates with the native files app so you can see that drive right there in files on your iPhone or iPad. You can also choose to back up your entire photo library and you can get the iExpand flash drive in 128 up to 256 gigabytes of storage. So start using SanDisk's iExpand flash drive go to free up space on your phone. And it makes a perfect holiday gift for friends and family. If you have that one family member who refuses to pay for iCloud storage, this might be a great gift. So at least you know their photos are backed up. So right now, Apple Insider listeners get 15% off their first order of featured SanDisk products, but only when you go to SanDisk, that's S-A-N-D-I-S-K dot com slash Apple Insider. That's SanDisk dot com slash Apple Insider for 15% off featured product. Don't wait. Go to SanDisk dot com slash Apple Insider. Our thanks to SanDisk for sponsoring this episode. So I haven't had a whole lot of time to try this. I actually snuck off today and did a 10 minute core workout and it, it was, it was nice. I'll note though, that depending on which workout you're doing, you're not spending much time looking at the TV. So right. it's, it's kind of funny that there's this whole uh, video component and you might spend two of the 10 minutes working out, actually looking at the content on the TV, but it is nice having it because they demonstrate a lot of the workouts and even give you different options. Uh, the core workout I did had three different people on the screen and one person was doing high intensity versions and one person was doing low intensity versions. So you could kind of choose right. which one you wanted to follow and uh, go with it from there. But Overall, it's, it's pretty interesting. It reminds me a little bit of group workout days back in uh, the Navy. And I will say that having someone talking to you, talking you through the workouts and uh, having the music playing and stuff, it's it's an experience that helps you get into the groove of working out rather than I've tried other fitness things like uh, there's there's apps that will just talk to you through your headphones and say, now begin push-ups for two minutes, starting timer. And that's pretty much it. That's nice because it gives you a workout and a time, but it's not as engaging and gets pretty boring pretty quick. This having this kind of video entertainment aspect to it definitely helps. And uh, I think I'm going to definitely engage with it over the next few weeks, see what happens. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to be doing them periodically. And the actual workout experience, like you said, you're not looking at the screen a whole lot. But when you do, it is really cool to see your heart rate, the time of the workout going, and your activity rings all live on screen. And there are times when the trainer does say, yeah, your heart rate's probably going up right now. And they will enlarge the heart rate number so it focuses on that on screen and you could see your heart rate. And in, they made at one point, Amir mentioned like the activity rings and the activity rings enlarged. And you can kind of see that, you know, focused in on the screen. So the integration with the Apple Watch and the Apple TV and doing the workout, it, I'm honestly, it's really cool. I mean, and it is very, uh, I would say, distinct probably from other kinds of workouts you can do. I mean, really being able to see your heart rate live on screen while you're doing it is pretty wild. Like that is a very cool feature. It makes me wonder where Apple's going to go with this. I don't know that they're going to make anything themselves, but I could definitely see some promotional things happening in the future where Apple and X fitness company comes out with, here's a gym kit bike that's affordable, or, you know, here's a line of them from this much money to this much money. So if you want to spend money and get more into the fitness stuff, buy these, buy this equipment and you can take part in more workouts and fitness plus and kind of have a partnership there. And I mean, this, this is very much early days, but it doesn't feel flash in the pan. It feels like Apple's very serious about this. And I just wonder where fitness plus is a year from now. And are we going to be talking about fitness bikes and weight sets on Apple Insider in the future? Yeah. And there's actually... So two deals that I've seen, Best Buy is actually giving Fitness Plus with the purchase of an Apple Watch. So there's already that deal. And I, I know there's some gym here in the U.S. that with the gym membership, they're, they're working out some kind of Fitness Plus deal as well. So like you said, yeah, it is going to be very interesting to see what organizations, gyms, companies, maybe even like health insurance companies. You know, I think some health insurance plans even give discounts on like Apple Watch and stuff like that. So be very curious to see what it does in the future. I know for my wife and probably many who do at-home video workouts, those kind of progressive training, 30-day, 100-day workouts, I'd love to see that be added. 
And it is interesting when you open the fitness app on Apple TV, there is a section that's like new this week. It almost seems to be implying that they're going to be adding new videos often, maybe different kinds of workouts or, you know, additional workouts in the segments that they have now. So I'll be curious to watch it. If you have a Apple Watch, I would recommend trying it. It's really fun. If you don't have an Apple TV, you can at least do it on your iPad. I mean, you could do it on your iPhone too, but it is nice to have a little bit of a bigger screen, but Fitness Plus, very interesting. It looks like Apple Watch is required for the Apple TV portion for some reason, but I think the workouts work on the iPhone and iPad without an Apple Watch. I'm not sure why there's a distinction, but this this does work if you don't have a watch. Gotcha. And you just put this link in show notes, and so it is Lifetime is a gym. They announced plans to offer Apple Fitness Plus with its gym memberships. So that's lifetime. Uh, they were adopted technologies like gym kit, but I'll put a link in the article in show notes that talks about that, but it's going to be interesting to see uh, those kinds of partnerships. So really curious. All right. Uh, real quick, a Pro Raw follow-up. Wes, last time you were on the show, we talked about Pro Raw. You were using it on a beta on your iPhone 12 Pro Max. And now Pro Raw is available to everyone in iOS 14.3 that came out earlier this week. Two articles that I just want to point out. Halide had a blog where they really went super in-depth. Uh, ben Sandofsky from Halide wrote in depth. He went so far as to explain what raw images are, like the science behind cameras capturing images and what raw is and what it means and all that. And he talked about what pro raw means to regular users. And also Austin Mann, we talked about him. He's a famous photographer. He does all the iPhone photography reviews every year. He goes to those, you know, exotic locations and all that. But he also talked about Pro Raw and why it matters. And he's got some side-by-side -side, like night shots of using the standard HEIC file that, you know, iPhone gives and what it looks like to take a Pro Raw file and edit it afterwards. And a pretty stark difference between uh, the Pro Raw and just the stock photos that come out of the iPhone camera. So just as a follow-up, I'll put those links in show notes, but if you really want to read up on what is Pro Raw, why does it matter, those are some great resources and articles to read about that. Yeah, just a quick couple of things on that. Going off last week's discussion, I mentioned Pro Raw and editing and certain apps and apps needing to update for it. So I wasn't fully aware, but it's, it turns out Apple's pretty much done this fully open source. I mentioned the DNG files that were coming out if you used unsupported apps. It's because ProRAW isn't actually a format. Um, it's taking raw DNG files, but it's using new portions of... It's like new tags, like, like new tags in the raw format. Yeah, it's, it's new tags in the raw format that Apple's actually uh, partnered with Adobe to build up support for. Apple's including information from its algorithms in the DNG tags. So in order for uh, apps to take advantage of the pro raw image, it needs to update to support those new tags. And that's about it. It's including information like the matte overlay used to determine if an image contains a person, plant, or object. And it's using um, information like the Apple specific HDR functions. Um, that's, this is stuff that's not normally included in raw format because raw again is just basic data in the widest reach uh, coming out of the lens rather than anything computational. But Apple's apparently mixed up computational and raw formats to uh, give us something special here. Yeah, re read these articles that give you a pretty in-depth view over why that's important, and it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, so finally, I wanted to touch on the craziness <laughs> that Facebook is doing. So first of all, with iOS 14.3 that came out, the new privacy nutrition labels, William and I talked about them last week, but they're now available in the App Store. You can go see it. I actually tweeted a screenshot video scrolling through the Facebook app, like what it collects data-wise, what it keeps track of in regards to its users and those who use the app. And it is comical, the amount of data it is reporting that it uses to track you. So that came out, but what is also a part of the iOS 14.3 and the new privacy things that Apple is setting up is that when you open up an app, it's going to say, do you want to allow this app to track you for advertising purposes? Do you want this app to be able to use your information for targeted ads, basically? And so Facebook earlier this year, I think it was over the summer, was talking about how this is going to be devastating for their business. And now they have gone so far as Facebook has pulled two full-page ads, actually multiple. They had a full-page ad of 
Wednesday this week, and it's running in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Washington Post. Then they took out a second day of full-page ads in the same thing, and it is a full-page ad basically saying the headline of the first ad was, this is Facebook talking, we are standing up to Apple for small businesses everywhere. And they are painting Apple as though they are trying, that Apple is trying to hurt small businesses and small business owners. And this is hilarious, but I'm going to pull this one thing. This full page ad is basically all text explaining what's going on. And I just want to read this little short paragraph that Facebook put in the ad. This is what they wrote. And I quote, 44% of small to medium businesses started or increased their usage of personalized ads on social media during the pandemic, according to a new Deloitte study. Without personalized ads, Facebook data shows that the average small business advertiser stands to see a cut of over 60% in their sales for every dollar they spend. These changes will be devastating to small businesses, end quote. A couple things about that statement. Number one, there's no hard data on this because it hasn't really happened yet. To say that the average small business advertiser, translation, you, the small business owner, will see a cut of 60% in their sales for every dollar spent. It's kind of a bold claim considering this change hasn't happened yet. I'm not sure what data they're showing with that. But also, it is, we need to be clear that Apple is not by default blocking Facebook from the personal info of its users. What Apple is doing is surfacing what Facebook takes as your data and giving Apple users the ability to say, no, I don't want Facebook to have my data or use my data for ad tracking. And so it is really the user then deciding in the end whether or not to allow Facebook to do it. So basically what Facebook is causing such a ruckus about is Apple giving the user the option and knowledge to opt out of this ad tracking. So while Facebook is attacking Apple for this, what they're really attacking is just the surfacing of what they do in tracking. And they know that once the average person sees this pop-up of, do you want to allow Facebook to use all your information for ad tracking? Any reasonable person is going to say, you know what? No, I, I don't care to do that. Maybe some people will, but obviously most people will not. And it's basically the thing they've been doing for years and hasn't really been noticeable or known to by most people. Apple is just surfacing that and telling people, here's the data they are using. Here's the data they're collecting. Do you still want them to do this? And that's really all Apple is doing. Apple is not eliminating the possibility of users' data being given to Facebook. So I think these full page ads are hilarious. They are pretty much misleading. And again, the, these claims that Facebook are making are very interesting. We've actually had comments on Apple Insiders forums from small business owners. And they're like, you know what? Uh, we'll be fine. Like this is not a big deal to me personally. Well, it's definitely a competition for uh, worst headline in 2020 because <laughs> between Spotify, Facebook and Epic, they, they just keep vying for the top position here. I mean, we, we've had Spotify say that Apple One is a... Um, what, what was it? Uh, an attack on freedom. <laughs> Epic <laughs> right. Games is comparing its battle with Apple to the civil rights movement. And now Facebook says that uh, small businesses need to fight against their ability, their Apple's ability to block ads uh, or ad tracking. Actually, it's a, it's insane. It, it's a wild year and uh, they're just trying to make it even wilder. My question is, is why now? I think the answer is obviously just there's so much antitrust litigation on Apple right now that Facebook and all these other companies are just taking whatever bite they can while they can because people want to, are happy to hate on Apple in this moment. The small business thing is very strange because it's basically saying, hey, if we can't extort your customers, we can't <laughs> advertise to them. And it's, it's insane. So I have done Facebook ads for small businesses and companies and for individuals, and they are useful. I mean, the um, the way you can target people's interests is creepy, but also useful if you're trying to target ads. A couple things to keep in mind. Apple is the only one doing this. The platform that is still the majority in the world is Android. So a majority of mobile users, like Facebook will still be able to get their information and do the targeted ads. And this is also 
on iOS. As people browse on their computers and things like that, like cookies and all that kind of stuff that track you across different websites, again, Apple is taking steps to limit those and give people the option. But this is not the only resource that Facebook has for people's information. And also like Facebook, if you have a Facebook account, they know your age, they know your location, they can look at your posts to know your interests. They probably know more about you just from having a profile, but they don't really need to track you across all these other apps. Like obviously more data is better and allows for more targeted ads, but Facebook would be fine. And I think most businesses would be fine. I mean, most of the Facebook ads that I have done is really just to localize the ad. You know, if you want to advertise your businesses in Tampa and you want to say, just send this ad to people who live in a 20 mile radius, you could probably still do that because again, Facebook has people's profiles. They have their Instagram. If people post on Instagram and do a location tag, they immediately know where you are so they could serve you the ad that way. There's lots of other ways to do it. And I just think these headlines and the statements that Facebook is making here is hilarious. They're also misleading. And again, I would say kudos to Apple for adding these kinds of features into iOS because I for sure, I've not had the Facebook app on my phone for a while or TikTok for all those privacy reasons. But I'm glad that this is an option that pops up for people and is at least starting to educate people that these social networks and platforms are 100% tracking the heck out of them. So the reason why Facebook is freaking out about this is mostly because they've created a narrative over the last you know decade or so of in order to make money on the internet you need to know every possible bit of information about every single user and then target ads at them and the danger here is is that apple is going to prove that that isn't the case and we've known for a while that general advertising works fine. You drive down the highway and see a billboard for Cracker Barrel and you suddenly get hungry for Cracker Barrels. Guess what? <laughs> it worked. But they didn't have to know that everyone driving down that highway also likes uh, biscuits and gravy for lunch. It's, it's not something that <laughs> you had to track down and figure out. And Facebook seems to think that in order to make any money on the web they need to know every site and everything that you've ever done collectively and every little thing that apple does to change that is a threat to their entire economic you know value to advertisers and that's why they're scared very curious where this is going to go over the next several months but listeners as we come to the end of the show tell us what you think i would love for you to tweet at myself i'm at steven robles you could tweet at wes at hilly tech those twitter handles are in show notes you can also email us your feedback we'd love to hear your thoughts about the airpods max fitness plus and what you think about this hilarious full page ad that facebook took out also, don't forget, if you have not yet, a five-star rating and review in Apple Podcasts would greatly help out the show and rise the ranks so we can be discovered by more people. So leave a five-star rating and review there. Also, don't forget to check out HomeKit Insider. We had an awesome interview with Jay Rao, the CEO of Molecule, the air purifying company. You can check that out, HomeKit Insider. Just search for it in your podcast app of choice. And don't forget to check out Apple Insider Daily. We have a daily, just a few minute show covering the top headlines of Apple every day. You can search for Apple Insider Daily in your podcast app or find the link in show notes as well. Thanks again for joining us. We'll catch you next time.